Welcome back into the world of cross-dressing stories. Now, please consider subscribing and check out my Patreon for more exclusive goodies. Dave slouched in the back seat of his parents' car, arms crossed tightly over his chest. As the familiar landscape of his hometown blurred into a montage of cornfields and small shops, a scowl settled on his face. Seventeen and already too weary of changes he couldn't control, Dave wasn't just protective of his space, he clung to it like a shield. Come on, Dave, it's just for the summer, his mother said, casting a worried glance at him through the rearview mirror. Aunt Emily is thrilled to have you. Dave huffed, turning his gaze to the window. I don't see why you guys need to ship me off just to have some alone time, he muttered under his breath, watching the sign to their small Midwestern town fade into the distance. As they pulled into Aunt Emily's driveway, Dave's grip tightened on the strap of his backpack. The house wasn't new to him. A two-story structure painted a cheerful yellow that seemed to mock his mood. He remembered it as the place filled with too loud laughter and too bright colors, much like Aunt Emily herself. Aunt Emily burst through the front door before the car even stopped, her energy radiating like the sun. She was everything Dave wasn't, lively, bubbly, and utterly unconstrained by norms. Mid-twenties, with streaks of pink running through her blonde hair, she defied the usual image of a Midwestern aunt. Davy, she exclaimed, rushing to pull him into a tight hug as soon as he stepped out of the car. I've got the whole summer planned for us. You're going to love it. Dave managed a weak smile, his body stiff. As his parents drove away, leaving him in a puff of road dust and waving hands, a sense of abandonment welled up inside him. He followed Emily inside, his suitcase trailing a reluctant rattle behind him. The house was exactly as he remembered. Walls adorned with vintage movie posters, shelves overflowing with colorful knickknacks, and in the corner, a vinyl record player softly spinning an old rock album. It felt like stepping into another world, a world where every corner was designed to challenge the grayscale palette of his comfort zone. So, your room's upstairs, third door on the left, Emily chirped, leading him through the maze of her eclectic living room. I thought about setting you up in the guest room, but I figured you'd like the view from the study more. It overlooks the lake. Dave nodded, not really caring about the view. He was more concerned about how he'd survive a whole summer here without his routines, his room, and his carefully curated personal space. That night, as he lay in a bed that wasn't his, surrounded by walls that told stories of someone else's adventures, Dave felt a pang of longing for home. But beneath that, almost imperceptibly, a spark of curiosity flickered. Maybe, just maybe, this summer could be more than just an exile. Maybe, in the most unexpected way, it could be a beginning. Three days into what Dave had already mentally dubbed his exile summer, the reality of living with Aunt Emily began to take its full toll. The small annoyances piled up, from her morning smoothie rituals, blenders were not meant to run before sunrise, he was certain, to the constant stream of local friends popping by, each more colorful and loud than the last. It was a Wednesday when the incident happened. Dave, usually meticulous about his belongings, had agreed reluctantly to let Emily handle the laundry. His trust, however, was misplaced. As he stepped out of the shower, wrapped in a thin towel, the absence of his usual pile of clothes seemed a cruel joke. Emily, he called out, irritation lacing his voice as he peeked out the bathroom door. Her response came too cheerily from the basement. Just a sec! Minutes later, Emily appeared at the top of the stairs, her hands conspicuously empty and a mischievous grin plastered across her face. Well, it seems we've had a little laundry mishap, she announced. As if it were the beginning of a joke, Dave had no intention of finding funny. His heart sank. What kind of mishap? The kind where your clothes are currently a sudsy soup in the washer, she said. I might have used the wrong detergent or too much. It's going to be a while before they're wearable. Dave's eyes widened in horror, his mind racing through his limited options. What am I supposed to wear? The towel felt increasingly inadequate. With a flourish, Emily presented her solution, pulling from behind her a bright pink dress and a pair of matching lace underwear, Chad laying them out for him to see. Ta-da! I figured you could rock these until we sort out your clothes. What do you say? The suggestion struck Dave like a physical blow. He recoiled the color draining from his face. Are you kidding me? He spluttered, 
unable to believe she was serious. Emily's smile faltered a little, sensing his distress. I thought it might be fun, you know? A little change from the norm. Her attempt to keep the mood light did nothing to dissolve the knot of embarrassment in Dave's stomach. No way. I'm not wearing those, Dave snapped, the towel tightening around him as if to shield him from even the idea of such a transformation. Sighing, Emily shrugged, a hint of disappointment in her eyes as she turned to leave. All right, let me find something a bit less festive. A few moments later, she returned with a compromise. Soft red and black checkered pajama pants and a plain pink long-sleeved shirt. How about these? Just until we get your clothes sorted. They're comfy, I promise. Reluctantly, Dave accepted the offer, his cheeks burning with a mix of relief and residual embarrassment as he quickly dressed in the bathroom. The shirt was a bit too tight, the fabric stretching slightly awkward, and the pants hung loose on his hips, but it was infinitely better than the alternative. As he emerged from the bathroom, Aunt Emily appraised him with a nod. See? Not so bad. And hey, pink's your color. Who knew? Dave couldn't muster a smile, instead crossing his arms defensively. The clothes felt foreign on his skin, a constant reminder of his situation. Trapped in this too lively house with his too eccentric aunt, wearing clothes that weren't his, the summer stretched out before him, endless and now unpredictable. That night as he lay in bed, the fabric of the pink shirt brushing against his skin with every turn, Dave couldn't help but feel a twinge of curiosity beneath the indignation. Was there really harm in just clothes? His mind raced with questions about identity and expression, themes he'd never considered before this involuntary adventure. As sleep finally claimed him, his last conscious thought was a reluctant admission that maybe, just maybe, this summer could teach him something new about the world and about himself. As the days melted into weeks, the constant breakdown of household appliances became a norm rather than an exception in Aunt Emily's vibrant home. The washer wheezed and coughed up suds more often than it spun, and the dryer gave up entirely, leaving clothes in a perpetual state of damp. With his wardrobe effectively held hostage by mechanical failures, Dave found himself delving deeper into Aunt Emily's eclectic collection of clothes. Each morning presented a new challenge a new outfit, and a new emotional battlefield. At first, the discomfort was palpable. Dave would don a flowy blouse or a soft, oversized sweater and feel as though he were wearing a costume, an ill-fitting mask that he was forced to hide behind. The clothes were foreign, each thread woven with a silent question that Dave wasn't ready to answer. But as the days passed, a strange sense of curiosity began to seep through the cracks of his discomfort. The clothes weren't just different. They were comfortable, the fabrics gentle against his skin in a way that his own clothes had never been. One lazy afternoon, as Dave lounged on the couch in a pair of soft leggings and a tunic, clothes he never would have considered before, Aunt Emily flipped the channel to a documentary titled Living True Transgender Stories. The title caught Dave's attention, a spark of curiosity igniting as the personal journeys of various individuals unfolded on the screen. The stories were powerful, filled with pain, joy, and above all, a fierce kind of honesty. People of all ages shared their experiences with gender identity, their struggles with acceptance, and the liberation they felt in embracing their true selves. Dave found himself drawn into their worlds, their words echoing deep within him, stirring something he had pushed away for so long. As he watched, he began to see the clothes he wore not as mere fabric, but as expressions of identity. Each garment told a story, not just of Aunt Emily's eccentric taste, but of possibility. The leggings weren't just comfortable, they allowed him to move freely. The tunic didn't just hang loose, it let him breathe. For the first time, Dave looked down at his attire, not with embarrassment, but with a contemplative eye. Was he uncomfortable because the clothes were unfamiliar, or because they forced him to confront parts of himself he had never questioned? The following days brought a subtle shift. Dave started to experiment more with his choices, mixing and matching pieces with a tentative curiosity. Each outfit was a small step towards something new, something profoundly personal. He no longer flinched at the softness of a scarf or the snug fit of a stretchy top. Instead, he began to appreciate how they made him feel, seen, even if he wasn't sure yet what he wanted to show. Aunt Emily, ever the silent observer, 
gave him the space he needed to explore, never pushing, merely providing. Her house, once a prison of strangeness, began to feel like a sanctuary of self-discovery. In this place, where the walls were lined with stories and the air buzzed with the energy of acceptance, Dave found a freedom he hadn't known he was seeking. By the time the documentary series had ended, Dave was no longer watching simply out of curiosity. He was searching for something within himself, a truth that resonated with the courage of those he watched. The questions that the series raised about identity, about the courage to embrace one's true self, lingered in his mind, mingling with the threads of every outfit he tried on. In the weave of Emily's clothes in the fabric of these stories, Dave found a mirror reflecting a part of himself he had never dared to acknowledge. The day the washer and dryer breathed their last was the catalyst that pushed Dave, or rather Daisy, into the sunlight. The final breakdown was almost comical, suds spilling like a foam party gone wrong, water dripping in defeat. Aunt Emily, always the optimist, saw this not as a setback but as an opportunity. Looks like we're going shopping, she declared with a sparkle in her eyes, more a proclamation of adventure than a mere statement of fact. Seeing Dave's apprehensive glance, she added, and I think it's time for Daisy to see the world. Dave's heart clenched at the thought, his stomach a swirl of butterflies. Dressing as Daisy within the safety of Emily's home was one thing, stepping outside was another. Yet the thought of exploring his identity with the shield of anonymity a new town offered was oddly liberating. Okay, Dave finally murmured, the word feeling like a key key turning in a long locked door. Let's do it. The preparation was meticulous. Emily helped him choose an outfit, a simple floral sundress that fluttered just above the knees, paired with a light denim jacket for comfort and a hint of style. They worked together on makeup, Emily's hands gentle as she explained each step, turning the process into a ritual of transformation. When Dave looked in the mirror, Daisy looked back. A tentative smile on lips tinted a soft pink, eyes framed with a sweep of mascara that made them pop. Hair brushed into a style that framed his face softly. Stepping outside, Daisy felt the world shift slightly, like a picture tilting on a wall. The air felt different, charged with possibility and fear. Emily linked her arm with Daisy's, a silent pillar of support. The drive to the store was a blur of nerves. Each stoplight was a moment of hesitation, each passing car a potential eye. But as they walked through the automatic doors of the department store, Daisy's fear began to morph into something else, curiosity, excitement, even exhilaration. The store was a canvas, aisles of colors and textures waiting to be explored. As they perused the racks, Daisy's initial timidity gave way to a sort of wonder. The soft brush of silk, the snug embrace of a well-fitting jean, the cool slide of cotton, each fabric told a story, each piece suggested a promise. Encounters with other shoppers were inevitable. A curious look here, a disregarded whisper there. Daisy felt them like, like the brush of moth wings, noticeable but not impactful. One woman complimented the dress, her smile genuine, and Daisy found herself returning it, her confidence blooming like the flowers on her dress. The real transformation occurred in the fitting room. With each new outfit, Daisy experimented not just with styles, but with identities, each garment a layer of discovery. What had started as a mask, a costume, became an expression. Daisy wasn't just wearing women's clothes. She was exploring facets of a self kept hidden, facets that now shone under the fluorescent lights of a public space. By the time they reached the checkout, Daisy was not just carrying a bag of new clothes, but a lighter burden. The awkwardness and fear had transformed into something empowering. She walked out of the store, not as Dave in disguise, but as Daisy, a person who was learning to define herself on her own terms. The drive home was quieter, reflective. The rearview mirror caught Daisy's gaze, and this time, the smile that met her eyes was more certain, more grounded. She had ventured into the world and found a place in it, not despite her fears, but through embracing them. That day, Daisy didn't just find new clothes, she started weaving the fabric of her identity. One thread of courage, one stitch of self-acceptance at a time. As the summer days began to wane, the initial thrill of discovery that Daisy experienced started to dim under the looming shadow of reality. With each passing day, the inevitable return to his old life, his old self, Dave, brought a tightening in his chest. The vibrant sundresses and soft fabrics hung in the closet, 
not just as garments, but as symbols of a freedom he feared was temporary. The thought of re-entering his world, where expectations were set and labels were fixed, filled him with dread. How could he reconcile the daisy he had grown to accept with the Dave everyone else expected? The fear of rejection by his friends, the confusion or disappointment of his parents, weighed heavily on him. He found himself retreating, pulling away from the vibrant world he and Emily had created, as if preparing to shed a skin he had only just grown comfortable in. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the porch where they sat, Aunt Emily noticed the change in him. Her voice, when she spoke, was soft but firm, cutting through the gathering dusk. You're scared about going back, aren't you? She asked, her eyes kind but perceptive. Dave nodded, his throat tight. How can I go back to being just Dave after all this? How can I forget Daisy? Emily reached over, taking his hand in hers, grounding him. You don't have to forget, Dave. Daisy is a part of you, a beautiful part that you've discovered. But I understand it's scary to think about how others will react. She paused, her gaze shifting to the horizon where the first stars began to twinkle. When I was about your age, I went through something similar. I started realizing that I didn't fit into the neat little boxes everyone wanted to put me in. It took a lot of courage, a lot of self-love to accept that I was different. And yes, not everyone was accepting, but I learned that the only acceptance that truly mattered was my own. Dave listened, the cicada's song filling the brief silences, nature's own backdrop to Emily's heartfelt disclosure. Being true to yourself, embracing all parts of who you are, that's the key, Emily continued. It doesn't mean it'll always be easy, but trust me, living a life where you can be authentically you is worth every challenge. Her words, simple yet profound, echoed inside Dave, stirring the pool of fears and doubts. He looked up at Emily, her face illuminated by the soft porch light, and saw not just his quirky aunt, but a kindred spirit who had navigated her own path of self-discovery. What if they don't accept me? Dave's voice was a whisper, vulnerable. Then they don't deserve you, Emily said sharply, her conviction clear. Anyone who loves you will have to learn to accept all of you, and we'll be here, your dad and I, always a safe space. That night, something shifted within Dave. The conversation wasn't a magic solution, but it planted the seeds of courage. As he lay in bed, the moon casting shadows across his room, he realized that while the road ahead might be uncertain, the journey of self-acceptance was one he was ready to continue, no matter the obstacles. The summer ended not with a return to normalcy, but with a newfound resolve. Dave decided he wouldn't hide Daisy away, but would find ways to integrate her into his life, little by little. It was a plan, a hope, and most importantly, a declaration that he was the master of his identity, ready to face the world, not just as Dave or Daisy, but as a whole person, beautifully complex and undeniably real. As the final days of summer dwindled to a close, Dave packed his bags, not just with clothes, but with a trove of new understanding and acceptance about himself. The journey he had embarked upon under Aunt Emily's roof had irrevocably changed him. He was no longer just Dave, he was also Daisy, and he was determined to honor both identities as parts of his whole self. Before he left, Emily sat him down for one last chat, a final piece of the summer's mosaic of self-discovery. Her voice was hesitant at first, a contrast to her usual exuberance. Dave, there's something I've never told you, something about my own journey, she began, her eyes locking with his. She shared her story, her struggles with identity and acceptance, and how she too had learned to embrace her true self after years of conforming to others' expectations. This revelation stunned Dave, not just the facts, but the realization of the depth of understanding and empathy Emily could offer. It bonded them even more deeply, transforming her from merely his aunt into his mentor, his ally in the journey of self-discovery. With this newfound connection and understanding, Dave felt a buoyant hope as he returned home. He had devised a plan, tentative steps to integrate Daisy into his everyday life. It wasn't a grand declaration, but a subtle introduction of his alter ego to the world. His first act upon returning home was to confide in his parents. He shared everything about his summer, about Daisy, and about how he felt more complete embracing both sides of his identity. His parents, though surprised, saw the undeniable joy and confidence in him, and they embraced him, 
both parts of him with all the love they had. Encouraged by their acceptance, they began to share Daisy with his friends, starting with those he trusted most. Not all reactions were understanding or accepting. But Dave, armed with the self-assurance and acceptance he'd nurtured over the summer, found that he could handle rejection with a resilience he hadn't possessed before. Each disclosure, each conversation, was a step towards the authentic life he yearned to live. The epilogue of Dave's summer unfolded as he moved through his final year of high school. Daisy became a known identity among his circle, and Dave found solace and strength in being true to himself in both public and private moments. The fear that had once threatened to overshadow his joy was now just another part of the journey, one he was well-equipped to navigate with Aunt Emily's wisdom echoing in his steps. In a world that often demanded conformity, Dave, through Daisy, found a way to proclaim his uniqueness, turning what had once been a source of internal conflict into a banner of pride. As he looked towards the future, to college and beyond, he did so not with trepidation, but with an eager heart, ready to explore and embrace all the complexities of his identity. Each step forward was a testament to the transformative power of self-acceptance and the unconditional support of family, chosen and given. The summer with Aunt Emily had indeed ended, but for Dave it was not just an end, but a vibrant new beginning.